Okay, we're still doing close-up work. All right, this little flaker. I think we'll generate enough pressure where I can do this. Does it matter? Yeah, sometimes I bend the nail. I'll be putting a lot of force on this. Make sure I'm on the convex part of the pad because this is a lot of force. I don't want to bridge it for you guys that are new. And it, it wobbles like this. I mean, I push down and it, it goes like that. That's the worst thing that nappers will face. That stupid wobble. Can't do anything when that happens. Uh, the one technique is to make make the angle on the ledge sharper that way even though it wobbles downward it won't slip off as easy if that angle is sharper but it also increases the risk of crushing it so it's a very subtle thing that's why it takes forever to learn how to do this I'm still trying some thinning flakes Otherwise, I would just be chipping, chipping, and then get just doing the general shape. Well, I think that's the last of the thinning flake attempts. That wasn't too bad right there. So now it's just a matter of shaping and talking. Shaping and talking. Talking about silly stuff. Talking about stuff that makes me look stupid. <laughs> Yeah, questionable intelligence. Let's talk about stuff that implies or that indicates my questionable intelligence. How's that? Turn the volume off now, guys. Here it comes. Getting ready for the pressure. Oh no, he's sharpening the tip. Here comes a lot of pressure and lots of stupidity. <laughs> lot of pressure work. Lot of stupid. Alright, here we go. Or you can put it on double speed. Make fun of how it sounds like a chipmunk. This is the first point for today. I should have started a lot earlier. But you know how things go. It looked like it was going to rain, so I didn't set up. But it still looks like it's going to rain. But I said, nah, let's just go for it. I'm outside. When it's overcast, it's not too bad out here. I'm back in Texas for a little while anyway. For those of you who didn't know that I even left, I am now residing mostly in Vermont. Really? <laughs> yes. Why Vermont? That's where my dad's house is. Well, one of his houses. He's got a little bitty house he lives in now. It's trendy. He lives in a tiny house. He's got a bigger one, but he doesn't live there. They rent it out. Smart, smart. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to either build one or buy a, a tiny house for my first one up there. I don't want to live directly in the city. I want to live out... A little ways, if possible. Although I don't want to live out way out in the sticks because then what happens when I run out of coffee? I don't want to drive 30 minutes just for coffee. But I have to. If I run out. <laughs> it's amazing our dependence on caffeine. Although I don't drink as much coffee anymore. I used to. 
I will take the caffeine pills, especially when driving. And if I have this caffeine withdrawal, I'll take a caffeine pill. Easy peasy. So as long as I have my stash of sausages, a good freezer, the water in Vermont is awesome. I can drink from the tap and it tastes better than drinking bottled water here in Texas. It's amazing. As long as I have my sausages, and my caffeine, stash of rocks. That sort of thing. My shop. What could be better? What more could I ask for? Maybe a companion that doesn't get on my nerves? <laughs> that would be good. Okay. Alright, so where do I go from here? Do I sharpen the tip? I'll just keep working on the bottom. I'll just keep working on the lower part of this. Although that concrete patch is, is driving me up the wall. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Six minutes in. I might be able to finish this in this segment. If I don't snap off one of these barbs. All right. Well, if you just don't talk about it, it won't happen. Yeah. I wish that were true. There's some videos where I... I don't talk and I still break them. Right? I think. Or maybe I deleted those. Can't remember. I'm not doing much abrading. I knew it. I should have abraded that. Might have avoided that step fracture. See that step fracture? I might have avoided that or it might have been the result of too much dip in that area. I just couldn't travel very far. But we might be able to damage control that later. We, us together, we can do it. Okay, I don't know why I say we instead of me, all right? Can you hear the radio in the background? Somebody let me know. It's, uh, the volume is really low right now on the radio in the background, but if you can hear it and if it bugs you, I'll know. I'll know what volume to not have it at. Golly, Ross Stone, such a joy to work with. Oh, yes, such a joy. Beautiful. It'll test your skill, man. That's why it's great. That's why Ross Stone is so great. Everything else feels like butter after you've done raw, nasty stone. Everything else is butter. Okay, well, that part is true. Everything else is butter. But you know, after, after dealing with it, you don't want to work anything else because you're too worn out. And you think it to yourself, you know what? I could have probably doubled my productivity with something I wouldn't have to take forever on. So much damage control and so much abrading and so much extra effort. But if you have all day, and if you're doing this for the relaxation or the zen, being in the zone, I suppose it's just fine. Go for it, man. Go for the raw, tough stuff. Get in that zone. 
You know, some of these didn't have stems. I don't know why I'm so worried about having a wide stem on this. Maybe these were made from raw stone? Eh, probably. Probably made from anything. Raw, heat treated, obsidian, chert, agate, chalcedony, jasper. Whatever it looks pretty. Because culture does influence the technology. I'm just going to come out and say it. Just going to come out and say it. You don't have to wonder about that. Culture does affect the technology. The, the lithic reduction, as they would call it. Not just in the Americas, but everywhere. You look at some of the Egyptian flint napping, which is really awesome. The flake scarring was intentionally very nicely done on their knives and blades. It was actually almost exactly the same as fog napping, flake over grind. They did grind down their preforms smooth in many cases. The Egyptians, yes, the Egyptians, those Egyptians, Stone Age Egyptians, would grind their preforms on some of their knives. I forget what they're called. There's a fancy name for the knives, I think. I know some of you guys can look that up and go, dang, they did do the fog napping. Yep. That's culturally influenced. Because the blade needed to inspire awe and wonder. Oh yes. Maybe they even said it was made by the gods or a demigod. Who knows? Who knows? Keep the flit nappers secret. Special skill only practice behind curtains no one could see maybe even within the temples who knows who knows I'm not saying that the information is not out there it might be out there I'm guessing I don't know enough about it I haven't done research on the Egyptian stuff All right, so I'm going to show you how I don't flake. If I push too hard on that, it's going to snap right there. I'm trying my best to get that the neck of that uh, stem a little bit more narrow. But that's the famous last words. Can I half that onto an arrow? Yeah, but it's going to look pretty bad. It's a little bit thick. Well, what I'm going to do is, since I keep getting phone calls, I'm going to cut it short. Just leave it as it is. Because I'm sure you get the idea. That it's very difficult to thin down a piece of raw stone. It's not that hard to sharpen a piece of raw stone, but it's hard to thin it down. I think I got it thin enough to qualify. That's going to be my story anyway. Thin enough, good enough. Why did they do it this way? Well, the internet says they made it this way so that upper part would snap off and stay in the wound and uh, cause a lot of pain to the enemy. All right? Because you can't, if you can't get that piece out, you just better hope the body has got a very strong immune system. Because the internet also said that they would dip the t upper portion of this in poison. Yes, I said poison. So unless you have a very strong immune system, 
you will most likely die from this eventually if it gets broken off in the wound and you can't get it out I'm sure this tip is a little bit larger than it's supposed to be but I didn't take measurements or do a scaled drawing according to the internet but I think it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a, about two inches long At least the one I saw, one of the ones I saw was two inches, 25 millimeters. And made from some sort of colorful. Agate or something. All right, but this is translucent. That'll fit on an arrowhead. I mean, that'll fit on an arrow. It is thin enough. Where you would wrap it, just wrap it around the, the bottom, around the stem there. Uh, use a lot of glue. Because the stem is pretty short. All right, because uh, on some of these that have expanding stems, they didn't use any glue. But on this one, since it's so short, you would need some glue on there. All right, so that's it. i got to answer the phone calls. hope that was good enough. This is raw Texas chert of some sort. little plug of concrete. I could have made this stem more narrow, but I don't want to mess with it. I could have sent in some flakes from the base perhaps to thin that down but that would risk snapping it so I think most of the work on these was done with pressure flaking that's my assessment on this one if you want my opinion these were pretty much pressure flaked on uh, flakes still a lot of the original flakes are on this side although I don't know that if they were done that way probably not okay so here you go